So we've spent some time now talking about planning and what systems you need in order to be ready to go out of the office and what you can do to prepare for the return. And if you do this right, even if you do it in the smallest incremental way, you're going to have some data that's going to come from that form of reports. You're going to have some information in front of you that you might not have otherwise seen. How can you most effectively use that information? Well, that's the first thing that we're going to talk about in this module, how to talk about bottlenecks. Well, we can't have a module in this course without having a pretty picture to somewhat distract us along the way. And this module is no different. Um, this is one of the greatest inventions in mankind's history, and it's the swim up bar. And um, I happen to be a big fan of these, so I thought I would include it. But I don't mean it for it to be too much of a distraction as we go on to discuss this idea of bottlenecks. Okay, so it's time for a little bit of truth talk. Um, part of the reason why you get out of the office, how do I say this? I want to know how the system's going to fail. <laughs> I know, you know, I, I don't intentionally want you to be doing something so that you, so that it doesn't work. But how things don't work is often as important as how things work. Now, we all know that the office works better with you in it, okay? We don't actually know that. They may not actually be true. But you need to get out of the office in order to see a little bit of that. And when you have some time away, you will see where the bottlenecks are. Now, I will tell you, I'm, a, I'm an old aerospace engineer. That's what my official undergraduate training was in. I actually went to graduate school on that as well. And one of the things that you learn, and it's a wonderful image, I, I have kept it with me for my entire life, is a flow can only go as fast as it goes through the slowest point. I'm not saying that well, but the idea is there are choke points. If you think about a hose, if you pinch a hose at a certain point, you pinch it where it doesn't exactly close, but only a, a, the smallest amount of fluid is getting through, that's the amount of fluid that gets through the whole hose. No matter how much pressure you've got or how much is pushing through at any other point, the choke point determines how much is actually getting through. So where are the choke points in your business? Here's, here's some bad news. In many cases, in many cases, the choke point is you things that you need to have across your desk, things that you must feel that you must be involved in, things that only can proceed if you give the okay. And while we understand that conceptually, when you're out of the office, you start to see it. Will people get paid if you're out of the office? I don't know the answer to that question. I do know that I've worked with businesses which were 20-something employee businesses, millions of dollars a year, and one of the two principals of the company personally handled the payroll every two weeks. Now, those of you who have been dealing with businesses or own businesses or involved in businesses, you know you can hire somebody barely above minimum wage to take care of that for you on, uh, you know, for, for a couple of hours every two or three weeks. Not an expensive proposition, but the owner of this business felt that she needed to handle that personally because she wanted to make sure things didn't get away from her. That created a bottleneck, and it limited her ability to leave the office. Not only leave the office on vacation, but leave the office to go pitch to clients, leave the office to go make presentations of white papers at conferences where other potential clients might see them and want to hire them. There's a lot of those sorts of issues. It's important to learn where those bottlenecks are coming from and how they're impeding the work from getting done in your office. And it's not just you. It might be other people who you work with in your office who are slowing things down. And when you're out of the office, you will have an opportunity to see how the bottlenecks are stopping the work that's being done. Now, it's not all bad. When you see these bottlenecks, now that we've spotted them, we know where they are, 
We know who they are. You know, we've met the enemy and he is us. Um, it, it gives us an opportunity. It gives you, importantly, an opportunity to move projects, move assignments, move duties in such a way to elim eliminate or ameliorate those bottlenecks. So in other words, reduce their impact. Make it so that, yes, things are a little bit slower because of the bottleneck, but they're not paralyzed if the bottleneck is really um, out of commission. Because sometimes, you know, the vacation is at least a voluntary absence from the office. But if you get hit by a bus, or if you have a significant family member that's ill, you may find yourself working remotely for an extended period of time. And in those situations, you want to have these safeguards in place. And if you've done them voluntarily, it's a lot easier to implement them voluntarily in the context of a vacation than on the fly when there's already a lot of stress in, in whatever's happening in your personal life or in your business life or anything of that sort. So the, the identification of bottlenecks gives you a significant opportunity to identify stalled projects, stalled uh, efforts, and how to fix them by either working around the bottleneck, addressing the bottleneck, or something in between. And here's the thing. It also gives you an opportunity to see if you have the right people working for you. One of the things that I see small businesses doing all the time, incorrectly, is hiring the wrong people. They wait too long to begin the hiring process. They get to a point where they must hire someone immediately, and that person may not necessarily be the right person for the job. I'm, I'm now... Uh, realizing that many of us are too young to remember the book The Peter Principle, but it is a very applicable concept even in today's world. The Peter Principle, for those of you who don't remember, is, you know, you're, you're under 50 if you don't remember, and that's okay. I won't hold your uh, youth and inexperience, as President Reagan said, against you at any point. But here's what the Peter Principle is. The Peter Principle is an idea that we are all promoted to the level of our incompetence. In other words, if somebody is a file clerk in a company and they are the best file clerk that you have ever seen, they get promoted to be the supervisor of the file clerks. But guess what? They don't know how to do that job. One of two things will happen. Either they will learn to do their job and they'll do it so well that they'll get promoted out of the supervisor position to whatever the next level up is, or they will kind of just be mediocre at it and they'll stay as file clerk supervisors. And so now you have a universe where all you have are mediocre file clerk supervisors because that, that cast of characters is not good enough to get promoted out of that job. <laughs> My point is in telling you this story. There, it's an opportunity when you see the bottlenecks, when you see how the work is happening when you're not around, gives you an opportunity to see who your superstars are. And, speaking euphemistically, it gets you an opportunity to see who your non-superstars are. And that information is critical for you to have an effective, efficient business. It's not that I'm looking to make you go out and mass fire a bunch of people, but if you've got people who are in the wrong place job in the wrong doing the wrong thing or the wrong way or whatever it gives you an opportunity and it gives you some hard data to look at to evaluate to figure out if these are people who are in the right place the right slot in your company i've intentionally used the word opportunity frequently during this this module and i've done that with this quote in mind from JFK. When written in Chinese, the word crisis is composed of two characters. One represents danger and the other represents opportunity. Now I will confess, if you go out and out onto the internet and, and Google this, you'll find that while JFK actually did say this, he was wrong. Uh, he's also the same president that I think showed up in Berlin and proudly announced that he was some sort of 
Cherry Danish or something along those lines. So maybe he wasn't the greatest in terms of accuracy, but this is a great quote. And I really would like for you to be thinking about these challenges and the trepidation that you have about leaving the office as an opportunity to improve your office, an opportunity to be pr more productive. And so in the next section, we're going to be uh, uh, taking a look at some other ways that we can use the data and the procedures and the processes that we are developing to improve the way your office works. I look forward to seeing you in that module, and it's right around the corner. Talk to you then.